the OnePlus 10 Pro. Now, normally OnePlus releases their phone to everyone at the same time, but this year, that's not the case. This phone is not available here in the United States. Makes you wonder if something's up. So today we are going to durability test this OnePlus phone to see if there's anything we need to find out. And even though this is not a Hummer video, we do have Hummer shirts in stock with the Whisper Project right here on the front and all of the specs from my custom military Humvee turned electric on the back. A few people have asked why my shirts are so inexpensive, and that's because I don't use a third party middleman to ship my stuff. I do everything myself right here from home using today's sponsor, Stamps.com. Stamps.com has been around for 20 years, helping over a million businesses like my own get the best rates for shipping. Using Stamps.com, I can get up to 40% off of USPS and 76% off of UPS. Those are massive discounts. Plus, no trips to the post office, no traffic, no standing in lines. Because time is money, and Stamps.com saves me time, money, and stress by allowing me to do everything right here. And it's a win for everyone, because I can take the savings I get from Stamps.com and pass them on directly to you, making my stuff less expensive. If you want to start shipping your stuff for less money, head to Stamps.com slash JerryRig for a special offer, free postage, and a free digital scale. Plus, there's no long-term commitments or contracts on that free four-week trial. So whether you have a side hustle, Etsy shop, YouTube channel, or full-blown warehouse, if you have a computer and a printer, Stamps.com can get you up and running in minutes. You can find the links for Stamps.com slash JerryRig down in the description, and I'll get to shipping your shirt right after we finish this durability test. Let's get started. So I just want to start this one off by saying I have never had a OnePlus phone snap in half. We've had one break, yes, but it's relatively rare actually for any smartphone to fail my durability test. Out of the hundreds of phones that go through this routine, only seldomly do we have one expeditiously expire. That being said, OnePlus has included a charging brick in the box, which is nice, along with a flexible case probably not going to help. Dude, let him watch. Personally, I think the phone itself looks pretty good, actually. It's got the textured back glass with a hint of sparkle, like an I focus at work but party on the weekends kind of vibe. Upon close inspection, there does appear to be a screen protector included on the front, which is nice. Any protection is good protection. However, and I've never had this happen before, there is a very distinct smell coming from the protector, almost like some very strong hairspray. Not that I have much experience with hairspray, but it is super strange. If I hold it up to the camera, you might be able to get a whiff. Oh no, I guess we'll just have to wait for the metaverse. Let's start with the scratch test. Back in 1822, a super smart guy named Frederick Mose invented this cool test to see what different smartphone screens are made from. It can, of course, also be used to differentiate between different minerals, but man, that guy was ahead of his time. Plastic is a level 2 or 3, glass is a 5 or 6, and sapphire would be an 8 or 9. You might have noticed as well that there are a lot of apps and warnings on this phone in Chinese. And that's because OnePlus has decided to not release this phone in the USA. This is a foreign model, and as you can see, it does scratch at level 6, with deeper grooves at a level 7. The front-facing hole-punch camera is chilling under that same slab of glass. It's 32 megapixels. The earpiece slit is up here as well, with no grill. The sides of the OnePlus 10 Pro are made from aluminum. It's interesting that if we switch OnePlus's numerical numbering system to a base 2 binary, instead of OnePlus 10, we get OnePlus 2. Which is the first OnePlus phone I ever tested, 7 years ago. We've come full circle. Looks like every side and button of this OnePlus 2 is made from metal. The dual SIM card tray has its red rubber ring around the opening to help keep water out. Even though there is no official IP rating, it's good to know that the protection is there. The back of the phone does have a seam next to the camera lens. 
where the metal frame joins up to the glass, and then of course we have the heavily textured back glass panel, which once again is using its level 6 texture to sand down my level 5 steel razor blades. The dust can mostly be rubbed off though, so it's not a big deal. I think the textured glass is pretty cool. The cameras on this phone is where Hasselblad comes in with their color calibration. Apparently, this main 50 megapixel camera can support 12-bit raw images, which is a pretty big deal on paper. I'll let other reviewers handle the image quality, I'm just here for the durability. And it looks like the other two cameras, the 8 megapixel telephoto and 48 megapixel wide angle are protected with glass as well. The ring flash also has its own glass lens, dual tone with both LEDs at the bottom, and kind of a light bar effect up at the top. No complaints so far. The display of the OnePlus 10 Pro is also one of the main selling points of the phone. Most screens these days are unable to show those billions of colors collected by the rear Hasselblad cameras, but the display on this OnePlus 10 Pro is 10-bit, which means it can handle at least a billion of those shades that the camera can collect plus the 6.7-inch 120Hz 1440p display can last for about 40 seconds under the heat from my lighter before it gets toasted and does not recover. As I'm setting up my fingerprint, you can see a permanent little gold mark in the corner of the screen. Hopefully, though, that's all the damage this guy will sustain. This is called foreshadowing. Silence. With the fingerprint registered, we can add some level 7 deeper grooves to the bottom half of the screen, right above that optical reader. Even with that hefty marring though, the fingerprint reader is still able to find my print and unlock the phone every single time. Nice work on that scanner, OnePlus. Thumbs up for that. However, it's time to assess the structural integrity of the phone as a whole, as I always do with the bin test. If you ever hear noises during this portion of the video, it's usually a bad thing. And none of those were good noises. The volcanic black frosted back has been thoroughly cracked. The cracks consolidate into what looks like a line directly underneath the stovetop camera bump. I don't think it's the frosted glass that's what's making the phone weaker though, since we've had plenty of frosted textured glass phones survive, and they survive in one piece instead of millions. I think it's something else. The phone is still alive though, which is good. Let's bend the OnePlus 10 Pro from the other direction. And now, except for the flashlight, the OnePlus 10 Pro is definitely not alive anymore. I would say though that this flash does appear to be rather exceptional. It's a little unnerving that we are only two phones into 2022 and we've already lost one. And the one phone that has survived so far this year is a folding phone. Well, I guess technically they're both folding phones now, since the OnePlus 10 has a nice crease right under that camera lens. But normally, most phones cannot be cracked in half with bare human hands. So let's see why this one can. Removing the back panel is easier now that we aren't worried about it breaking. Any more than it already is, of course. It's kind of fun we can combine the teardown and durability test into the same video. And, you know, I'm not a structural engineer, but it appears to me that the lack of structure is what contributed to the rapid unplanned disassembly. The large dual cell 5000 mAh battery runs lengthwise across the whole phone, leaving just the side rails to take the force of any human accidentally sitting on it. Maybe that's why it's not being released in the USA. OnePlus thinks that Americans are too fat for this phone. And while they aren't wrong, it is a little rude. It also doesn't help that the volume button is placed where it removes some structure at that exact breaking point, above the battery on the right side. And on the left side, there is an antenna line, along with a much thinner metal exterior than I expected. The metal exterior shell isn't doing a whole lot to hold the phone together. And, you know, don't get me wrong, if the OnePlus 10 Pro stays in the front pocket, it'll last just fine for its 3-7 to seven year lifespan, but in a back pocket or any abnormal abuse could very well cause the 10 Pro to kick the bucket much sooner than it should. Durability is one of the many factors to consider when buying a phone. Like always though, one broken phone doesn't make a brand bad forever. OnePlus can pick up the pieces and come back with a more solid phone next year. A simple rigid case will always help add structure where there is none, 
I'll leave a link for my teardown skins and grip case down in the description. It's definitely too late to protect my unit though. Protection is more preemptive and not so good retroactively. Does a phone snapping in half affect your buying decisions? Let me know down in the comments. I'm off to go ship some shirts with stamps.com. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.